So this thing will spend the rest of its life in a big pool of oil. <laughs> it's like, yep. a, like, a, like a dinosaur's. Next part of our engine series here, Josh has laid out everything for rebuilding the oil pump in the 390 Cadillac. So let's check out what we got here. Okay, well the first thing is I disassembled everything and um, ran it uh, through my ultrasonic cleaner. So everything's nice and, and spotless clean. Um, there's a slight bit of wear on the cover plate, but nothing, you can see it, you can hardly feel it. Um, there's no um, scoring in the uh, pressure regulator bore, so the housing is in good shape. Yeah, you want to inspect that casting yeah. on the inside, across your surfaces. The plate that goes on the back here, you'll see a little knock on there. As long as it doesn't close catch your, your fingernail. Feel it. Feel it. Yeah. Feel it. If it doesn't catch your fingernail, it's probably okay. And we have our, uh, our straight edge here to check when we put the gears in. And so something I wanted to really address was the, um, the floating strainer. And that's really interesting with the set, the what they developed and even the patent that they had on that. Yeah, and, I, and we'll be looking at a patent drawing here that's related to this. Uh, it would be the second patent number on it. So this floats on top of the oil. And the idea is that it doesn't pick up any water or sludge that's gone to the bottom of the oil pan. But part of its job is to act as a filter. And in the cars, in some cars, this is the only oil filter. That, yeah, a lot um, of early stuff. A, a lot of earlier cars or, yeah. or cheaper cars mm -hmm. in the day. And if you have a bypass oil system also, a bypass filtration system, not all the oil is filtered at a given time, so you can still get um, material into your bearings. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do on these is that the screen acts as a valve. In the center of the screen, there's a hole, and the the screen is domed, and that hole, that hole is sealed against the cover. And that allows the oil to be normally sucked through the screen. And the theory is that if the screen gets plugged, dirty oil is better than no oil. So the screen will collapse, and the oil will be sucked through the hole in the middle. Uh, so what I recommend you do, and whether you're rebuilding an oil pump or you're resurrecting an old car, maybe, maybe you've got a car that's been sitting for years. I've, done this on all my old cars, pull the pan, uh, pull the strainer, it's only held in with, with, a, with a cotter pin, so it's no big deal to pull it. What I like to do is pry this cover off, be sure you note the orientation of, of how it's mounted. It's just press sheet metal. Yeah, so you can very carefully pry the tabs off, take this cover off, and you can clean all the junk out on the screen, rinse it out in some solvent. Um, it's cheap insurance, especially yes. when you have, you know, the, I mean, we'll be doing that like on our barn car coming up. Yeah, that's so. right. Yeah, so that's something I wanted to address that uh, some people overlook, is that this is, this is really, this is the heart of the oiling system. Without getting good, clean oil, the uh, oil pump doesn't do you any good. Yeah. So. And this, this kit, too, is available through Caddy Daddy, and it includes, we've got the uh, gears. Two new gears. Two new gears, springs. Mm -hmm. Um, and the uh, pressure pressure. Uh, pressure regulator yeah. piston. Uh, when you're taking things apart, you'll find that there's a cotter pin across here. And that's holding the spring and the, the piston, the spring, and this little retainer back. So you don't want to lose this retainer because this is under spring force. You pull, keep your finger over it when you pull the pin out. It's one of those things that's going to shoot across it, the garage. It likes to go. It yeah. likes to go across the shop and be hard to find. Apply a little oil onto the shaft in here and generally kind of all over so that we get so that the new parts will be uh, lubricated and 
What I like to do is take a little petroleum jelly and kind of get some of that in between the um, the teeth of the gear, and that helps the pump to prime. You don't want to have to have any trouble sucking oil up out of the pan when you're getting ready to start the car for the first time. And that's the whole thing. When we first start this car up, a lot of the things that you see us doing is in preparation for that first initial break-in, yeah, no, for a set. So. And also, if you've any time that you cause the oiling system to lose its prime, uh, you'll want to do this so we can insert that gear in. Slide right in there. Slide right in. You can notice is the tolerances. It should be a nice, smooth, very close. Nice tight clearance right across the surface right here. Definitely do not want anything sitting higher. That's right. Yeah, you don't want the gears to sit higher than the... It's, it's real close to right around yeah. one thousandths uh, in play in those gears. Yeah, just checking it with is, that gauge. Which is there. very nice and tight. So um, what we can do is now put the cover plate on. And I'll torque these to their final torque once the pump's mounted to the engine. So this is where the pickup goes, is in the larger hole, it's closest to the plate. That hole's for the uh, pressure regulator, which is composed of the piston, the spring, the retainer, and the, and the cotter pin. We'll get some oil down into the opening, and we'll oil the parts. And the, a little in there, little, little Josh's little helper there. And the, this hole is um, bored a little bit larger in this outer area versus where the piston actually runs. So if you think the piston feels loose when you drop it in, it will be loose in this outside edge. But it's going to find its home a little bit further. Yeah, down. there's a there's a reamed section. And there are little retainer. Yeah, which on top I'm of the spring. Gonna, and try not to send it flying across the shop. Yeah. And I'm just going to use this cotter pin to try to retain it. To hold it in while I start the actual cotter pin. <music> and now we can take the pickup. And you want to make sure the pickup has a, a nice tight fit, mm -hmm. it's not sloppy. Because there is no gasket or seal or anything here, just this uh, a ridge here. A little ridge, or... and turn that towards the camera there, Bob. I'll show you how the, the cotter pin when oh, it down, down low. There we go. Uh, when the cotter pin goes in, it retains uh, it against retains that it right rip. in here. And so what I like to do here too is give it a little bit of the petroleum jelly. Helps make a seal initially until all this is wet. Once this is wetted with oil, then it, then it uh, maintains prime. Yeah, because this will be submerged. And so the, the ears go around the... The, the little cap. casting right there. So it just has limited motion like that. Then we go and insert our cotter key. And we'll bend that over. And there we go, we have ourselves a rebuilt oil pump. Beautiful. It's down here on the bottom of the engine. What we're gonna do is install the oil pump and the windage tray. So let's go ahead and first of all, put a little bit of that, you know, little gasket guess, sealer. Gasket sealer right on that surface. I usually don't put it on the gasket. I just put it a little bit on that sealer yeah, right there. Just like a little, it, it's, oh, it's just. Just a little here. safety margin and get the same surface on the oil pump. Okay. So what we have is, these motors had a factory windage tray. And not all engines have these, but the Cadillacs this year did. And basically what it does is it's a sheet metal plate 
that sits below the crankshaft. And we kind of have to fit the uh, oil pump kind of intertwines with the windage tray, so we kind of have to... They're, they have to be twins. They have to go yeah, in there they again. Kind of, so, and when you get the oil pump lined up, then you can adjust the tray later because you will need to lift it up to get clearance to put the nuts on the oil pump. There's your other two. And the purpose of the windage tray is it, it keeps the crank from just diving through the oil in the oil pan. Also keeps it from, black, you know, it kind of gives it, uh, it takes away the turbulence a yeah. bit in so there. Because the oil pickups here, it kind of protects the oil pickup uh, from being, uh, from splashing. It kind of holds the oil in position to be. Uh, Even sometimes foaming up. up too. Foaming up, yeah. Because yeah. the crank spinning around it can but it was, things up quite a bit. But it was actually kind of one thing where it's a Cadillac. And that was one luxury thing at the time that this was, you know, a little bit of their extra engineering. A little extra engineering. Snug your side up yeah, there, Bob. Yeah, that guy. Go ahead and tighten it down. I got my yeah, snug. lift up on that. Now you can play with this windage tray and you want to look at your clearances. The ones I've found sometimes, you know, they get knocked around. They're just a, a thin metal. Yeah, so. and they bend easily. And, and and you'll see we went in and blasted this. It was it was pretty, it, it, they get pretty oily and dirty and gunky. And what I did notice was you wanted to watch towards the back of the engine that you had good clearance around the, um, around the uh, counterweights on the crank. So this thing will spend the rest of its life in a big pool of oil. It's like, <laughs> yep. a, like, a, like a dinosaur's. Okay, we'll there check. We go. So what's great is then that's going to allow us to put the oil pan on. this what's very interesting is in 1959 they used a canister style oil filter bypass type bypass and this block which came with the uh, convertible that we have mm -hmm. is actually a 60 block now in 60 they went and relocated the oil filter over to this they, side. yeah they went to a full flow system instead of the bypass so what we're going to do is um, have the full flow system because it, it's absolutely necessary to get the oil to flow to where we need it in the block and we're going to go ahead and also mount the bypass filter when we do the, the accessories top side. So we'll have a dual filtration like they do on a lot of big trucks and on diesel engines. Yeah. We're actually going to end up with the best of everything. Have full flow filtration and then we'll have the, the bypass to pull out the smaller part of it. And what's great is it'll still have that aesthetic of looking just like the 59 on That's there. Right. But then have the added. And have, the, so have the, the real good feature of having yeah. full flow filtration. So we're going to bolt this guy on yep. here and then this will come soon with the accessories. You have your gasket, and then there's actually there's three bolts three that bolts. hold it on there. And these ones, and we're using brand new bolts, which are also, if you need these specific bolts, are also available with Caddy Daddy.
Vine Village is a great organization that gives back to the community. Check it out. You'll see so as well. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Son and Kirsten. We're here at the 2018 Vine Village Celebration, our major fundraiser here that helps fund programs that we run for people with developmental disabilities here in the greater Napa community. Vine Village was founded by my family and another family each who had children with disabilities in 1972. And we depend on donations from all sorts of foundations and individuals and businesses throughout our community to help fund these programs and this is our biggest fundraiser of the year. Well, congratulations, you've reached the end of one of our videos. Now we've got more. Maybe you could click on one of these ones here and I can get out of the shop one of these days. <laughs>